One of the asylums has been completely torn down. City of eight million people. You and I share our entire life stories right here on our phone, whether it's through video or snapping that perfect photo. But when you download apps to share your favorite photos, do you know what you're agreeing to? And who can hold your information? It hasn't always been this way. Over the years, the Boy Scouts of America has been working to become more inclusive. In 2017, it eliminated its ban on gay troop leaders and employees. In 2019, it welcomed girls. And now in 2020, the introduction of the diversity and inclusion badge. When it comes to mail and voting, every state is different. In Kansas, anyone can vote by mail. All you have to do is send in an application. But in Missouri, it's different. To vote absentee, you have to meet one of six qualifications and have it notarized. And as far as mail-in ballots go, well, this year, there's a special exception. The I-Team learned in the past decade since the tornado, residential building has been soaring. The city issued 16,000 permits, totaling nearly $500 million. From the outside, everything looks as it seems. Medicine, candy, and detergent. The trick is... When you mix it, it's hard for children to know the difference. Okay, it's time to bring over Leah and Trip. Sweet beginnings, early learning. Like Easy to miss these brown adopt a street signs across Kansas City if you're not looking for them. New ones haven't gone up in a couple of years, and that's Gary. We are in Linwood, one of the homes that was hit by the tornado, and take a look. There's no more roof here. It was completely gone. From our understanding, this home had burnt down just a couple years ago, and the homeowner had just rebuilt it. It's so much confusion. We came down here to Topeka to ask your questions and get you answers. But after seeing so many homes leveled in 2011 and 161 lives lost, in the 10 years between 2011 and 2021, the number of homes with partial basements actually dropped by about 700, but those with full basements went up by 700. Joplin left the decision to install basements or shelters to homeowners. Suggesting those who are fully vaccinated can visit others who are fully vaccinated indoors without masks or social distancing. Visit with unvaccinated people from a single household without a mask. If those people are at low risk for COVID, young and have no underlying condition. For 25 years, the Juarez family has called this home. We have our own space to do our own things. 80 acres tucked away outside of Lewisburg, Kansas, where everything is quiet except the sound of the creek. This creek was small when we bought in 92, and it's just um, every year it gets wider and wider. But now getting to and from their home has become a balancing act. It's hard. <laughs> To say the least, it used to be connected and now it's not. The family has lived like this since July, when rain washed away the bridge to their driveway, the only way in and out. When it floods, it covers the entire road. The water so strong, it pushed these two culverts away, creating a 12 foot gap, forcing the family to now climb their way through the stitch. Everything that you see is, it didn't just lay on this way, it's because my boys have helped move these big massive rocks so that we'd have something dry to walk across. And it's the fifth time it's happened. The county claims this is private land, but the dispute comes down to where the easement starts and where it ends. But that's what we've been asking the county is, where does our survey lanes, line start? And they say it's 30 feet, but we have paperwork that proves that it's 40 feet. Estimates to repair the bridge range from thirty to fifty thousand dollars. A more permanent fix would cost even more. Until then, uh, we have two cars that are house side, and then the rest of our cars are street side. This family is learning how to navigate their new reality. I, I get that money's an issue, but it it it's not okay for us to be living this way. Reporting in Miami County. I'm exhausted. I'm utterly exhausted. Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News.
Kevin, the family who survived this storm sheltered in their basement only to emerge with the kitchen now without a roof. The place they poured their heart and soul into renovating looking more like a dull house rather than a home. Need help? In Linwood, Kansas, all day and night, neighbors helped sift through the shock. They don't even know, don't even know who these people are, but stepping up so awesome. After a powerful EF4 tornado tore through this town. The whirling, um, yeah, of course, things start breaking. You can hear the, rip, the roof ripping off. Among those lending a helping hand, DJ Terrell. Man, look at that. Crazy, isn't it? His high school buddy's home completely leveled. They didn't even call. I mean, it just, I just came. You know, they're good, uh, good people. From neighbors ordering each other's storage containers to strangers like those with heart to heart. We're just giving them right here. Giving out free shots. Do you remember the last time you had your tetanus shot? The rotation of help was constant. Yes, I guess we feel very lucky. As those like Chris Hahn tried to find the little things to smile about. I don't know, it's probably third or fourth grade. Um, he's the little guy in the middle. Like pictures that weathered the storm. Like the guy next to him, he's here right now. And helping injured fawns. This one we thought he was he was done for. Regain their strength. Super sad situation. It's kind of like a happy moment to to see. And we want to show you another one of those happy moments throughout the storm. This flagpole actually survived. One of the neighbors told me he coined it bent but not broken. The new mantra here in Linwood, in the city of Linwood. Reporting live, Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News. All the glory and all the glory. Love. The world of dirt track racing is fast, loud, and oftentimes young. But one team is showing old guys can hang with the rest of them. Two of the guys are 70, 168, and I'm the young guy. You know, I'm just 63. Don Mars has raced cars for decades. Now, every week, Mars and his friends compete together. I think I'm probably a lot less aggressive than I would have been when I was younger. Friendships going back decades and a group that shares a common love. We've We've all worked hard all of our life, just like everybody does. Yeah, 30 some years. And now, now we, this is our enjoyment. The team racing tough on the track and working hard in the pits. We do all the body work and everything on it. The other guys do the engine work. Hi. Some working beyond their retirement for a shot at the checkered flag. We're kind of the ones here that Everybody comes to maybe even looking for parts or something. Yeah. A passion for racing and a team that shows no signs of slowing down. What binds us together is our friendship to start with, but we all love racing. A very little girl is. It was October 1995 in Chicago. We either find somebody who was attempting murder. This News stations told about a baby tied up in a trash bag. It was this dumpster that Rocky Hyatt was headed in a dumpster left to die. Have given the little girl a name. It is Mary Grace. The baby was adopted and never told she was baby Mary Grace. She's just a little sweetheart miracle. Morgan Hill is now 20 years old. She's had a happy life doing what kids are supposed to do. Morgan knows her story now. Her mom told her two years ago and had her read newspaper articles. She doesn't show a lot of emotion until we talked about what she would say to the people who saved her. Just honestly, thank you. And I couldn't say thank you enough for basically saving my life and giving me the chance to live a wonderful, beautiful life with the family I have. Little did Morgan know, 41 Action News had tracked down the construction worker. We had Morgan read an article to keep her attention, so she'd have no idea what was happening behind her. Was named Mary Grace by nurses because they considered her a gift from God. I asked her what the construction worker's name was. Construction worker's name was Gerald Rocky Hyatt. And then told her he'd just walked in. I would like to meet Rocky Hyatt. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been my privilege. 
de nada. Your mother has done such a wonderful job with you. Then they sat. Morgan listened as if for the first time to her story. Filling up the dumpster, already been called to pick up the next day, and the wind was blowing. Uh, it's turning cooler, and I, I just heard a little whimper, and I, I didn't know if it was a, a baby or a cat. And uh, so I went on further down lengthwise back to the middle of the dumpster, and I heard it again, and I saw the, the, ba the bag move. He ran into the nearby hospital for help. When I burst into the ER, I was out of breath, and I told him, I said, I think someone has placed the baby in our dumpster and I'm uh, out of breath and excited and they said, you're having a heart attack? I said, no, someone has placed the baby in our dumpster. I believe. The nurse, Carol Shafransky, opened the trash bag. Opened it up and I go, it's a baby. It's a beautiful baby girl and uh, just scooped you right up. I brought some pictures and clippings that, that I had saved. There was a reason for it and it's, it's for you. You know, I no longer need to keep these. I just honestly wanted to say thank you for everything you guys put through for me as a baby. I honestly couldn't ask for anything better to have been given the second chance to have a life the one that I've been living for the past 20 years. <sighs> that second chance, the chance to live this life, is why baby Mary Grace, Morgan Hill, is speaking out now. She wants others to know if you find yourself with a baby you cannot care for, there are options. There's more that you can do rather than just throwing your baby away. Morgan is on a mission to raise awareness about safe havens for newborns, places where parents can drop off their babies, no questions asked. Her hope is no baby ends up in a dumpster like her. Well, she would have died, and no one would have known about it. Hi, how are you today? It's an election year unlike any other. With an ongoing pandemic, Miss Lady will take you. Thank you. Advance and absentee voting lines are long in Kansas City. One of the most historic elections. We met Stefan Singleton, who has never missed an election. I really am so happy about that. This year was going to be no different. Instead of voting by mail, Singleton voted absentee in person. I think it's just so immensely important that you make sure that your vote gets to where it's supposed to go. Um, if mailing it is the only way that you can do it, okay. But um, I know for me, my conscience is clear knowing that I saw it. He's not alone in his fears about the Postal Service's reliability. Over the past few months, President Trump has raised concerns about voting by mail. The universal mail-in ballots have turned out to be a disaster. Despite the president's comments, mail-in ballot requests are at a record high, both in Kansas and Missouri. We wanted to test the mail to see how reliable the Postal Service is, so we rented a mailbox at the Brookside UPS store. First, we addressed envelopes, the average size of an election ballot, to ourselves from ourselves, printed off labels, and made sure each envelope had a stamp. Then we hit the road. Me, my photographer, and an associate producer dropping off three envelopes at three separate post offices in Kansas City, Jackson, Platte, Clay, Johnson, and Wyandotte counties. In total, we mailed 54 envelopes between 3 and 6 p.m. The next day, we sent another 54 for a total of 108 envelopes over two days. And then we checked our mailbox again. Uh, uh, UPS store can help you. And again. Let's see what we have in here. 45 of the 54 first day envelopes came two days after we put them in the mail. Quite a lot of ballots. The remaining 63 arrived the next week, meaning we received all 108 ballots within three to five days. Not surprising, according to Wyandotte County Election Commissioner Bruce Newby. And it's rare that it takes longer than that. In Kansas, mail in ballots can be returned in person or through the mail. If you opt to mail it back, your ballot must be postmarked by Election Day and received by the election office before 5 p.m. on the Friday after Election Day. 
Otherwise, your ballot will not be counted. During the August primary, 50 ballots arrived at the Wyandotte County Election Office too late. Even though their standard is three to five days for first class mail, these have top priority. In Johnson County, the number of late ballots was even higher. 673 were not counted in August, which is why Ashley Harper decided to use a drop box for November's election instead. I really uh, wanted to, to do the drop off because I thought it would be more secure and I would know that I was actually placing it. Across the state line in Missouri, voters who request mail-in ballots must send them back through the Postal Service. They have to arrive at the election office by 7 p.m. on Election Day, meaning voters should mail them several days before. A road trip to rural Missouri and Kansas showed sometimes mail delivery can take more than a week. We dropped off 12 additional envelopes in Pleasant Hill, Lone Jack, Bucyrus, and Wellsville. Two envelopes came back within two days. The rest took longer than a week, even though we sent them all the same day. Which is why election officials say no matter where you live, if you plan to vote by mail, fill out your ballots and mail it now. This is something that I think is one of the most important things that you should have control over. Reporting in Kansas City, Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News. This weather is brutally cold, and for those who don't have a choice but to be outside, it is dangerous. Photojournalist Gio Garcia shares an initiative in our community to help those who need it most right now. Winter weather. From warming up the car to scraping off the ice and snow. If you have to get out this week, take it slow, stay home if you can, and stay warm. But not everyone has that option. I would advise anyone that has any type of shelter, has a home, a couch, a grandma, a grandpa, or anything, please stay home because this weather is no joke. Luke Banks has been homeless for almost four years. I don't have to be homeless right now, but you know what? This is my calling to help people, and this is what I'm going to do until the job is done. Banks has felt what it's like to survive in these freezing temperatures, and he wants to make sure others have a safe place out of the elements. Well, I was the first one uh, over off of 18th and Vine to find the first man this here winter frozen solid. I lost my thumbs last winter. Uh, it was about this bad out last winter. This is about as bad as it was last winter. And it's getting ready to get worse tomorrow. But my two thumbs are artificial from the middle up. I have artificial flush in my thumbs due to the fact of me helping the homeless people out and I won't stop. With the help of the Midwest Homeless Collective, they are providing tents, food, blankets, and most importantly, heat. Just get as many people off the streets as possible um, into, into safety and warmth. This winter is pretty brutal. Um, today what we're going to be doing is going around to camps and seeing if anybody wants rides back to the warming center. But no matter how cold the temperatures get, Banks won't stop until he helps everyone he can. Turn a human being away from the heat is not accepted by me. So this is why we do what we do. Reporting in Kansas City, Giovanni Garcia, 41 Action News. She opened an ice cream shop in November of 2019, just before the pandemic. Our photojournalist Giovanni Garcia shows us how she's been able to stay in business, serving her community one scoop at a time. A kaleidoscope can show you so many different colors and shapes. And at Kaleida Scoops Ice Cream Shop. Can I get for you today? April Reddick has every flavor. Cookies and cream shake. And type of ice cream you can think of. We have bubble gum, strawberry cheesecake, cookie monster. At least 34 flavors daily. We also have like 10 to 15 flavors that are in the back. A flavor for each person. Each personality, each memory that it might bring back. Um, for instance, bubble gum brings back a lot of memories from childhood. Black walnut brings a lot of memories back from hanging out with grandma and grandpa at their house. But April's memory of opening the ice cream shop is a memory of hardship and hard work, but a delicious one nonetheless. I actually did not open with any loans because it was such a difficult process not having some of the things loans require under my belt. Typical 
single mom, local community college graduate, live day by day just making ends meet. Not letting hardship leave a sour taste, she was motivated to open so that she could be an inspiration for others. I want to be able to have little boys and little girls come in and say, hey, she looks like me and she's doing something great. April wants anyone that may be struggling with their dreams to keep working hard. Don't let hardship stop you or deter you. Just find a new way to go around it. Find a new way to problem solve it. Don't be afraid to ask for help because that's how she got her best advice. One of my coaches said is just get started and you can build up from there. So that's kind of what I did. I just got started and then I added in freezers and then I added in more logos or a new screen. You know, I just built one day at a time. Work on small goals first, then bigger goals get easier. One of the things I told myself constantly is it doesn't matter how fast I'm going as long as I keep putting one foot in front of the other. One step at a time, one scoop at a time. Just do something every day that pushes you towards your goal. Reporting in Kansas City, Kansas, Giovanni Garcia, 41 Action News. What did you want to do when you grew up? As a kid, you know, that's a common question. Becoming a journalist is no doubt an uncommon answer. But even in times like these, one Shawnee Mission senior says she's sticking to it. 41 Action News photojournalist Giovanni Garcia has her story. This year is such a huge year for journalism in high school. Lauren West is a rising senior at Shawnee Mission East High School and a journalist for her school publication, The Harbinger. Earlier this week, Lauren and her journalist classmates covered a local protest about school reopening plans. We kind of just took it upon ourselves to figure out what was going on and that we wanted to get in front of this and cover it. Journalism isn't the most liked profession in the country, but for Lauren... I honestly think that's what makes me want to be a journalist even more. She wants the responsibility to cover the news for her classmates and the public. I think it's time that we really need an unbiased um, source for journalism and media and a way that people can get information without having that bias in it and yeah that's what inspires me to come out and do stuff like this. Although this year has been tough, Lauren sees it as an opportunity to learn. The last couple months I think have been big in learning about the ethics of journalism specifically. We've got the election year coming up, lots of coverage with COVID, um, so we're just doing our best out here to try and cover everything we can and give accurate information uh, to our listeners. But no matter what, Lauren's goal as an inspiring journalist is simple. To report, um, give people a true unbiased story of both sides and just make sure everyone can learn what's going on because this is an important current event to cover. In Johnson County, Giovanni Garcia, 41 Action News.